Angela Halverson-Bogo. I'm an English storyteller who lived for a long time in Scotland and now I live in Norway. And the story that I want to tell you today is from Scotland. Yeah. Okay, so there was a small path along the side of the sea on a cliff top. And walking along it one day were two women of the she, the fairy people. And as they were walking along this path, they noticed suddenly in front of in front of them a bundle. And as they got closer, they saw that the bundle was moving and making a strange mewing kind of noise. So one of the she women bent down and opened up the wrapping and saw inside a child, a little child. And she stood up and the two women of the she, they looked at each other and one said, it's a child. And the other one said, yes, it's a, it's a mortal child. And then they looked behind them at the path where they had walked. There was nobody there. And they looked ahead of them and there was nobody there. They looked to the right and there was just moorland and gorse and heather. And to the other side, just the sea and the cliffs. There was nobody around. So quick as lightning, one of the women bent down, picked up the child, wrapped it up in her own cloak. And the two of them sped off down the path and in no time at all, they had disappeared. Now, around the same time, there were two fishermen who were making their way back to the fishing village and the light was starting to go. And one of them looking across to the cliffs thought he saw something and said to the other, I think there's somebody, I think somebody has fallen. We must go closer. The other fisherman said, no, no, if we go any closer, we will break the boat upon the rocks. And the first man said, I cannot go home and eat my supper in peace, knowing that somebody might be out there injured. We have to go. So they turned the boat in towards the cliffs and luckily they did not crash on the rocks, but managed to get out and find there was a body, a woman, and they lifted her down. She was unconscious. They took her in the boat and they went back to the village and gave her over to the care of the women. It took two days before she came to her senses. She wasn't badly hurt, but she was dazed. And the first thing she said was, where is my child? And nobody knew anything about a child. And they worried that perhaps was she making it up or had the child fallen into the sea? And she wanted to get up and go and look for the child immediately. But the women said, no, wait and rest. We'll send the men. So the men go up and they start walking up and down on that cliff top, looking everywhere to the right, to the left. There was no sign of a child. They came back and told her, she wanted to get up and go herself. And they said, you must wait and get your strength back. But when she was strong again, she said, now I must go and search for my child. Now they did not really know if there had been a child at all. And they asked her to stay, but no, she insisted on going. And she wandered from cottage to farm, from village to village. She walked and she asked and she searched Nobody had even heard of a child that had been found anywhere. And then one day she came to a place where the gypsies had made a camp. And she said to them, do you have my child? And they said, no, all the children here are our own children. But sit down and rest a while. They saw she was exhausted and miserable. They took good care of her. They bathed her feet. They fed her from their own pot. And they listened to her whole story. And then they said, you must stay here with us for a while because in a few days we will be going 
to meet with lots of our clan. And there is an old ancient woman who knows everything. Maybe she can help you. So this is what happened a few days later. The girl went with them and they took her to meet the old, old woman who sat her down beside her in front of the fire and took both of her hands in hers. And this is how they sat in the quiet as it grew dark. And the woman never spoke. The old woman never said a word until at midnight, she picked up a handful of herbs from beside her and threw them into the fire. And there was a great whoosh of flame and smoke. And the smoke came up around the old woman's head. And she listened. And then she said to the young woman, you must let this go. There's nothing to be done. The young girl said, what do you mean? What's happened? What do you know? The old lady said, I'm sorry to tell you that the people of the she have your child and they've taken, your, they've taken him inside their place, the she, and, and what goes in there never ever comes out. I'm so sorry. And then the young woman said, if I cannot have my child again, I may as well just lay down here and die. And the old wise one said, well, wait a while. Let's just wait a few days. Perhaps something will come to me. And it did. On the day that all the gypsies were parting ways and going in different directions and the old woman with them, she called the young woman to her and she said, listen, the magic that I have is as old as the world. I'm sorry, the magic that I have is as old as man, but the magic of the she is much older, as old as the world. And I can't give you any magic to meet them with, but I can do something. I can tell you something about the she. For all their power, they can't actually make anything themselves. And so anything that they want, they have to steal or beg. And they love beautiful things. If you could somehow find something so rare and so beautiful that they would bargain with you, perhaps you can get your child back like that. And the young woman said, but how do I, how do I get into this place? The old lady said, I, I can't help you with that, but um, I will do one thing. And she reached out her hand onto the head of the young woman and she blessed her with a spell to protect her from earth, water, fire, and air. And they parted company. All the gypsies left and the young woman sat there beside the remains of the fire. And she tried to think of what she could do. And at first her mind was in such a maze, such a mess, she couldn't think clearly, but then, she thought, maybe if I could remember everything that I know about precious and beautiful things, perhaps something will come to me. And so she, th she sat and she thought. And sure enough, she remembered two things that she had heard about. She had once heard of a cloak, a beautiful cloak. And she had once heard of a harp and the sound from that harp was so magnificent, people would be held in its spell. And with these two ideas, she went down to the sea because she realized she needed two things, something to get her inside where the she were and one thing to bargain with to bring her child out. So she started to climb all over the rocks, the rocks that were sharp, but her feet were not harmed or bruised. She was climbing on the rocks, collecting the feathers, the soft downy feathers of the eider ducks. This is where they had their nests. And she collected a great many of them together. 
and took them and sat on the beach and she wove all these soft white feathers into the most beautiful cloak. And then she took her golden hair and she cut off her golden hair. And with the golden hair, she embroidered into the edge of the cloak flowers and leaves and fruits. And the gold against the white in the sunshine was just exquisite. The whole cloak was like a cloud in her hands. She folded it neatly and she put it underneath a gorse bush. And then she went looking for something else. Now all the time she was working, the sea and the sea spray didn't come near her. The sun didn't burn her and the wind kept away so that she could work in peace. All the elements kept away because of the blessing of the old woman. Then she found some bones of an animal, a sea animal that had been, been bleached by the sun. And she took those bones and she worked with them until she had a framework for a harp. And then she took some more of her golden hair and she strung up the harp and then she tuned the harp. And then she began to play on it. And the sound was so exquisite that the birds were motionless in the air, listening to it. She took the harp and the cloak and she made her way to the place. The old woman had explained where it was. And she hid behind some bushes and she saw all the she going inside, one after the other. She watched them and she waited. For just as she hoped, there was one woman who came late. So the girl, she had the cloak around her and she stepped out into the path, blocking the way of the fairy woman. And at first the fairy woman was angry and she said, what are you doing here? This is not a place for mortals. Why are you here? And then she saw the cloak and all she wanted was to have that cloak. She said, how much money do you want for it? I'll give you gold. I'll give you whatever you want. And the young woman said, it's not for sale. Look, put it down on the ground, put it down on the ground and I'll, I'll cover it with gold and you can have any, you can have it all. Just give it to me, please give it to me now. The young woman said, it's not for sale for gold. But there is a price. What price? Said the fairy woman. Take me inside. Give me the cloak first. Said the fairy woman. No, no. Said the young woman. Take me inside first. And then you can have the cloak. So the fairy woman grabbed her by the arm. And in two seconds they were inside. Once she was safely inside, the young woman gave her the cloak and the fairy woman put it on. And suddenly all the she who were in there saw this cloak and they came over. They all wanted to touch it. They wanted to try it on. They started to bargain with her. And they were so busy, consumed with the cloak and its beauty. They didn't even notice the young woman slip by and into the main hallway. And there was the king sitting on the throne. Now the she had gathered to choose the new king for the next hundred years and there he sat on the throne. He saw her come in and he saw the harp that she held up in front of her and he said, what is that you have there, mortal? She said, this is a very special harp. Now he wanted it, but he pretended not to want it. And he said, oh, a harp, I have many harps. She said, not one like this. And then she played one note on the harp. And the sound was full of such wild longing and love that every she in the place turned and looked. And the king wanted that harp. He said, I'll give you gold. She said, it's not for sale for gold. 
but he had gold brought out and he piled the gold in front of her and she said no two of your fairy women two of your she women have taken my child and i'm here for the child i'll give the harp in exchange for the child now the king actually wanted this human child for himself so he said jewels and he had jewels brought in and he piled up jewels on top of the gold she was almost waist high surrounded by jewels and she said no she didn't even look at the jewels the harp for my child and nothing else the king said give me the harp first she said no the child first and so he had the child brought out because he wanted that harp so badly and the child as soon as he saw his mother reached out his hands towards her and she took him and she tossed the harp over to the king and he began to play and every member of the she in there was enwrapped with the sound of the harp and did not notice her leaving with her child in her arms. And she walked all the way back to the fisher folk, the people who'd been so kind to her in the beginning. And there they lived in peace for the rest of their days.